welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be discussing on uh, simple classification of substances and we are going to continue with uh, constituents of matter. Uh, previously we talked about elements and compounds. We were able to see examples of elements and also examples of compounds. You can go and watch the lesson and get to discuss that. So that lesson is going to um, uh, build on this lesson today because you will be discussing uh, chemical symbols and we will be looking at the rules of uh, getting those chemical symbols. And then also we will have a, have a chance of uh, doing uh, questions uh, in regards to what we are going to discuss today. So first you'll start with what chemical symbols are and what are some of the rules and where are they come from. So chemical symbols are usually letters that helps uh, to represent the elements. So instead of just writing all the chemical name or the word completely, all the time we usually use representation and these are usually in letter form. And these letters are usually can either be derived from the English word of the compound or element, uh, or it can be derived from the Latin name of the element. So there are specific rules on how we name them, and that is what we are going to look at next. So the first thing is you note that every time we write a chemical symbol and it has more than two letters, the first letter will always be a capital letter. And then the second letter will always be a small letter. So this is either it is an English name, you're deriving the letters from English name or Latin. Either way, if it has two letters, the first letter must be a capital letter and the second letter must be a small letter. So first, we are going to look at the ones that are derived from the first letter only from their English names. Examples are carbon. You see from the carbon, we're just picking the first letter and they said it is the capital. The first letter must always be capital. So you see the capital C. For nitrogen, uh, capital N. For oxygen, capital O. And for hydrogen, capital H. So these are the ones that have the first letter derived from the English name. So we also have some that are usually derived uh, from, from the English name, but the first two letters. So if we look at these examples, uh, calcium, you pick the first two letters, CA, and you can see the first letter C is capital, and then the second letter A is small letter. So another example is cobalt. You can see we are taking just a CO and we're just copying it. The first letter is capital, the second one is small letter. For chlorine now, we are not taking the first two letters, we are taking the first letter and the third. So it's CL and you can see C is capital and then L is small letter. And then for magnesium, we are picking the same way with chlorine, the first letter and the third letter. So it becomes MG and you can see M is capital, MG is small letter. There is always an error to forget to write the capital M as capital. So do not forget it is capital M, then small letter G. Then manganese also is direct from the first letter and also the third letter, which is N. And the first letter is capital and the small letter is uh, small. So you can see the symbol for manganese. So these are the cases where the letters are derived from the English. It can be only one letter, like in the cases we have discussed, or two letters, like in the case we are discussing now. There are some situations where the letters are derived from their Latin names. And these are the ones that you need to be very keen and careful with because they can tend to confuse. So with potassium, we do not pick PO. There is nothing like PO. PO will be another compound or P, P is actually another compound which is phosphorus. So for potassium we do not use that, we use the Latin name instead. So the Latin name of potassium is Calium. So we just pick the first letter which is K and it is capital. Sodium is Natrium and we only pick the first two letters and you can see the first is capital, second is small letter. For silver it's Argentum, 
we only speak the first letter and the third, A, G. And you can see our A is capital and G is small. For gold is Uriam. You can see we are picking A and U and so forth. So for iron is Fe, lead is Pb, and uh, mercury is Hg, and copper is Cu. All these are derived from their Latin names. You do not have to remember the Latin names. Uh, the only thing that you need to remember is their symbols, because these ones are the ones that are different from the ones that are being derived from the English uh, names. So later, next, we are going to look at um, a question in regards to what we have just discussed. So write the chemical symbols of the following elements. So lead is not derived from the English word. It's derived from the Latin name. So the symbol for lead will be P, B. And you can see it's capital P, small b. And then the um, symbol for iron is F, E, ferrium comes from the Latin word, capital F, small e. For sulfur, the symbol will be just S. It's derived from the English word. We only pick the first letter. For magnesium, we said you pick the M and the G, so it becomes MG. Remember, the first letter is capital, the second one is small. And then sodium is derived from the Latin word, and it becomes NA. And then copper is also derived from the Latin word, and it becomes Cu. So you need to identify all the elements in the periodic table, especially the first 20 elements, because that is what we are going to be using for the high school. Uh, so you sit down and write the uh, symbols for all these elements to be able to get enough practice uh, to be able to remember in the future. So that's it for today. Uh, see you in the next lesson as we write the equations.